Hey guys, do check lifestyle here. Back with another video. Um, this one is from uh, for Valuetainment, and uh, this lady reposted it. Verica. Um, the biggest, the WF uh, biggest fear is non-compliance. Reject di digital ID and do not comply, or you will lose everything and become a slave. There's a couple of videos I want to play you around this because I think people need to understand what they're talking about. When it comes down to the CBDCs, I'm not sure that it's something that we should be entertaining, but it's coming down the track, and that's the problem with it all. So I'm going to let her talk. The biggest fear that the World Economic Forum has is that there are going to be people that will not comply. Their biggest fear is your fight for freedom. Their biggest fear is that you will make individual decisions for yourself and you will not follow their orders. So this digital stuff is absolutely key. Because without it, they can't enforce anything. Without it, they can't mandate that you do something. Without it, they can't control your life. So I don't care if you're talking about carbon emissions and what's safe and effective as far as they are concerned. I don't care if they're talking about an experimental injection, a series of injections, whatever they may be, and what's safe and effective as far as they're concerned. This is not about those individual things. This is about the desire to control you from the outside in. And if they have a digital process whereby they can restrict your movement, your behavior, and your decisions with the click of a button, you are done. All right, next one. And this is from the German MEP. Christine Anderson explains how CBDCs in conjunction, and by, by the way, this is by Wide Awake Media, um, in conjunction with the digital ID will be used to exert absolute control over the global population if you do not comply you will just be shut down your bank account oh, you will just shut down your bank account and it's not like it's not happened before look at Canada there were people standing up for their freedom for the right not to take some unknown substance they shut them down they shut their bank accounts down so there was no cash what are you doing what are you going to do they can just eliminate they, they can just eliminate you with the flip of a switch it is that simple so we're gonna play this one you get it down a little bit yeah. when they take away the cash and once again it's just for our convenience of course you know uh they want to they want to get rid of uh, robberies you know it's for your safety if you don't carry, carry cash yep. anymore then you're going to be you know safe uh, yeah of course no it's not about that either it's uh it's pretty much to make sure that um there are no restrictions anymore on the quantity uh, or on the amount of money they could act, can actually create, you know, in some balance. And this is one of my biggest fears with this digital, not being funny, I, as much as I'm into digital assets and I am, I do see that um, with certain assets, if they keep them to um, a limit of how much they produce, like Bitcoin, 21 million, that's it. Um, you have XRB, I think it's 50 billion, and that's it. No more can be created. But I fear, fear, that with the new system they can create money out of thin air to do whatever they want and it's oh i'm on two two kind of like thought processes with it with this if i don't get involved am i going to miss out could it go the other way could they then decide that you know what people are not going to accept and but they will accept digital money but will not be controlled Will there be some kind of backlash, is, is what I'm saying. Will they face massive protests? Because if people ain't got no money, no bank account, they switch thousands upon thousands of people off, there's going to be a reaction. And they know that. But, oh, anyway. Answers, whatever. Um, and uh, there would be no reper repercussions anymore. On top of all of that, is um, you will no longer be able to save up money. Because if you do, mm -hmm. they might come in, they already have done so, negative uh, uh, interest rates. So you're actually losing money if you leave it sitting in the bank, but you can't get it and stuff it under your pillow as our grandmothers might have done it um, because there is no cash anymore. So now you're being punished. Yes, in CBDC, they could put an expiry date. They can do money. that, of course, too. So on top of that, you will no longer be able to buy anything 
without them knowing about it. There is going to be, and once again, it's just, you know, to cut down on, on, on criminal behavior and, you know, the black market, shut it all down. No, no, it's not about yep. that. So, you know, just, just very, uh, rather banal example you know now you have all of this uh, cbdc going on you have digital id of course you know will also be brought in so and let's just say you go to the grocery store you do your shopping and since you expect guests uh, the weekend uh, you buy let's say five bottle of, uh, bottles of wine right so you check out it's all good and on the way home you decide to get gas for your car well guess what you won't get gas at the gas station because you just bought alcohol. You know, it, seriously, it, it's just, it, yeah. it's a made up example, but that how it would yeah. effectively work if they yeah. wanted to. And I'm telling you, yep, yeah. they want to. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. They want exactly. to control. Total. Absolute power, absolute control, total, well, total power, um, absolute power corrupts and this is probably what they're they're, they're going to lead to control so what, what what will happen if you don't comply they will just shut down your bank account and it's not like it hasn't happened before look to to canada it has happened there there were people standing up for their freedom for their right not to get some you know unknown substance substance injected into their arms they shut down their bank accounts so if there was no cash, you know, what are you going to do? They can, they can just eliminate you with a flip of a switch. It's as simple as that. Yep, that's the danger, guys. That is the danger, possible danger. Mr. Man posted this one, um, and it's from NSE Valuation Webinar Series 2022. Yeah, I know it's old, however. What he says is, do I back the government? No. Is fiat real money? No. Do I understand what this world is controlled by? I, but I do understand that this world is controlled by currencies. 99% of people have no idea what currency it is, so they will, so they are willing to accept stable coins and CBDCs. Understand this, and you will see further. Listen to the real regulations discuss the regulators sorry discuss cryptocurrency and stable coins and what they are and what they are not the court cases are smoke shows don't fight the fed and be, be, be. Listen. so so i want to move very quickly um back to the that, um, thank you Ramel and, and john but let's touch cryptocurrencies really really quickly um cryptocurrencies can be regulated um, in fact, the, um, you, a, a couple of, of U.S. Um, congressmen, uh, or Congress people today um, asked for or proposed new legislation to regulate um, certain type of, of uh, cryptocurrencies in the, in the U.S. We'll touch on that maybe at the end if we, if we have time. Um, we know that, that China has looked at them one way. We've looked at other countries that have tried to incorporate them. But it's, it's really um, looking at them as a form of currency, the difference being it's not backed by a government entity. Um, so a virtual currency, when you really cut through it, um, it's, not in, it's not insured. Um, it may have some value, but the value that it has is only because people believe that it has value. Um, and, and Romel, is that, is that a, am I saying it too strongly or I'm not saying it strongly enough when we really think about cryptocurrencies from a value perspective? Is it really that they only have value because people believe they have value? Yeah, I think that's a fair point, David. I mean, you know, but I would also say that, is that different from fiat currency? You know, the fiat currency is traded because everyone else believes a piece of paper is worth something, right, and can be exchanged for real goods and services. And that belief comes from the fact that a government stands behind that currency. Um, we, we do see currencies failing and inflating and hyperinflating. Um, you know, I, I think it's, 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 it is, you can look at it very similar to fiat currencies. You know, there's, if enough people believe there's value and it can be used, you know, as a store of value, then, then it will have value. 
And and I think uh, I mean one of the questions that came in in advance and just to touch on it again, it's a much maybe a much deeper question is is it a a hedge against an inflation of cryptocurrencies? Again, in this context, it it doesn't have the the full faith and credit of a government behind it. In many cases, Bitcoin, an example, there's a finite number of coins, so they're not adding any. So that says that all right, the the value goes up and down not because you're adding supply it's just because of the the underlying demand um, uh, changes um, so it, 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 there are some differences um, there are some similarities um, let's just, David David I could just quickly add um, for, for a long time one of the um, proponent arguments about digital assets was that they were uncorrelated assets that or they were stores of value or they were inflationary hedges the last the, I just wanted to point out that there is a convergence within the larger asset management sphere where we're seeing not just crypto fund managers but we are seeing this call them traditional alts hedge funds and venture capital and others who are also investing in digital asset and venture capital and blockchain technology technology investments and therefore there is uh, um, uh, the two worlds are merging so therefore if something hits the hedge fund industry like a, a major event that would cause people to liquidate out of the hedge fund industry it's going to also affect the digital asset or cryptocurrency industry perhaps several years ago they were two industries that were not directly connected I'm seeing I think we're seeing more and more correlation more connection so the idea of them being totally uncorrelated as yeah, I'll get that because there is uh, a conversion, but these are the people that are going to be talking about, and, and cryptos can be regulated. It's just that there's, there, at the moment, the, the USA is lagging behind, uh, and we really do need them to wake up and start doing their job. There's another video from Wider Make Wake Media. Um, they're going to be talking about the collapse. Is it um, from Blackboard Portfolio Manager, uh, Ed uh, Dowd? Um, explains why every last remnant of the food of food your freedom depends on widespread rejection of the CBDCs. Once the central bank digital currency is linked to your all your credit cards and bank accounts, the social controls can be implemented. If you're but if you're decentralized like him, he says, talking about truth, they shut you down. They do have um, a link here to their full uh, Rumble and Telegram channel if you want to go and check it out. Um, I will put it a link. I will put that link in the description if you guys want to go and check it out. Listen. If you believe that the collapse is orchestrated in order to bring in central bank digital currencies, and do you think you, you mentioned a timeline to me before that was anywhere from two months to three years? What is the realistic? Uh, what are the realistic steps that you think they'll take to get us there? So. The system is going to collapse of its own weight. And if you know that it's going to collapse, wouldn't you like to introduce a system where you're in control of the new system? So that's what I believe is going on. They can't, I don't think, a lot of people say, oh, are they doing this on purpose? Well, it was going to happen anyways. So, um, and if, you're, if it's going to happen, wouldn't you like to control it on the way down and get rid of the regional banks and make the banking system very consolidated into six big banks in the U.S.? so that then it would be a lot easier to introduce a central bank digital currency. And so banking becomes like a utility pretty much owned by the government and linked to the central bank digital currency. And then from there, once the central bank digital currency is linked to all your credit cards and bank accounts, then social um, controls can be implemented. You can't, have, if you're a dissenter like me, talking about truth, they shut you down. It's just shut off your account. Um, if they decided that uh, cow farts are a big thing and they don't want you to eat meat, you'll have a quota. You go to the ca cash register and you try to ring up your meat and then the woman at the cash register says they won't let me ring you up. That's the kind of control, end-to-end -end control. It is literally a, 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 a prison planet, so to speak. Prison planet. I've seen that movie. <laughs> have you? You guys, if you like this kind of um, content, please like and subscribe. You now you can hear from Mr. Man XRP. We're living through um, a once in a lifetime opportunity to generate tremendous wealth. I think we're living in a once in a lifetime opportunity where the need for what we are doing will never be greater. Our potential impact has never been greater. He also says in here as well that we are moving in the wrong direction. I have listened to it and I think I've 
the CBDCs are the wrong directions. I think stable coins are much more to be much more accepted. We have seen an incredible um, reduction in global poverty. We've seen um, hundreds of millions of people escape poverty over the last several decades until now. For the first time in any of our lifetimes, it's going in the wrong direction. Poverty is increasing. That is not that is not the norm for the last several decades. And it started with the pandemic, but now it's exacerbated by climate issues. It's exacerbated by slowing growth in some of the major um, uh, economic centers of the world. It's and war. Yeah. Um, and so we're moving in the wrong direction. Um, so. On the one hand, the, the the need for what we're doing is more important and more urgent than ever. And then plus, but then you, I, I just talked about all that digital acceptance that's happened over the last decade and really during the pandemic. Um, our ability to have an impact has never been greater. Right? So the combination of, I, I do think we are living right now in a once in a lifetime moment where the need for what we're doing has never been greater and our potential impact has never been greater. And so so I'm very, very much in my organization is very much we're, we're all about seizing this moment, because if we do, I think the world can come out of the pandemic and really accelerate the 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 um, creation of a, a financially inclusive world. That's yeah. that's what this moment is. And it's it's very exciting. So that's that's why yeah. I take away from the pandemic. So, so. Anyway. Do check lifestyle out. Hope you, you, you like, like, subscribe, take care of yourself, guys. Bye.